What is going on YouTube? If you're new to the channel, my name's Evan and I'm an online reseller. That means I go to places like garage sales and thrift stores to find stuff to sell online for a profit. And in this video, I'm showing you the top items that I sold this past week. Items that you can be on the lookout for when you're out sourcing for yourself. So let's get into it. So this is one of those unassuming things that can be worth some really good money. This is some yarn and I'm not going to claim by any stretch of the imagination to know anything about yarn, but I've been finding it a pretty good bit lately and looking it up and they've got some pretty good comps. Like I found this big clear bag full of all these rolls of yarn or skeins of yarn is what they're called at Goodwill. Paid $20 for the whole bag. It had like 24 rolls in it. It had three of this color. So I listed these three together as a lot and they sold for $27. So I mean, I've still got a lot left. It's going to make some pretty good money, but just these three, like I said, 27 bucks, not too bad for some string. Kind of took a flyer on this backpack when I bought it, but it's a McDonald's backpack with different little McDonald's food in it from 2001. When I was at Goodwill, I looked it up and comps looked really good. Come to find out, I brought it home. It was missing some pieces. Actually, it was missing a lot of pieces. And there were some pieces that didn't belong in the set. But I only paid $3 for it, so I figured it was worth the chance. Sure enough, it sold overnight for 30 bucks. If you can find one that's complete, I saw it like I saw a new one sell for over $100. So definitely be on the lookout for these McDonald's play sets. So this is one of those things that it just kind of proves the point that sometimes even though things have really good sell through rate it takes forever to sell this is the american girl doll sage i think is her name she's retired from 2011 when i picked her up from goodwill for six dollars she had a really good sell through rate i figured i might have her for two weeks max and she should sell for around 75 dollars well six or eight months later i've had her listed on three different platforms i've taken her down relisted her she finally sold and sold for 50 bucks paid six turned into 50 took a while so i guess it but i guess it was worth it i don't know so here's a brand that you should definitely be on the lookout for this is bogan and then on this front here you can see manfrotto or manfrotto they're all made in italy really good camera equipment tripods mounting heads different stuff i found a couple pieces over the years and they've always sold really well i paid two dollars for this little fold up tabletop tripod at a little thrift store and it sold for 40 bucks in about three days so if you guys saw my last video my wife and i went thrifting on an island and if you haven't seen it, you should go check that out because we went thrifting on an island. It was pretty cool. But I picked up this Zenith radio. It's a Royal 2000. It's from 1961. Comps on it look really good, like $100, $200. And they only wanted $12 for it at the thrift store. So I picked it up, decided to take a chance. Well, unfortunately, it didn't work. So I listed it for parts as is. And it still sold for $76.50 in like a week. So not too bad. So I don't claim to know anything about professional basketball at all. Like the extent of my knowledge is I make and name all the teams if I was forced to, but I do know who LeBron James is. So when I found his jersey, I decided to look it up. And honestly, if you see any jersey that's good quality, especially if it has like stitched letters, you should look it up. But look it up carefully because of a certain logo or a patch or any kind of marking can actually make the difference between a $20 jersey and a $100 jersey. This one actually landed somewhere in between, but I paid $4.75 for this LeBron James jersey, and it sold for $65 on eBay. It took about three weeks. Another jersey. This is Jason Kidd's jersey for the new, I think it's New York Nets. I'm not real sure. I wouldn't know Jason Kidd if he walked in front of me right now. But I saw this jersey at Goodwill. It's nice stitch lettering, nice high quality, heavy jersey, and I decided to look it up. Sure enough, it was worth a decent amount of money. Paid $4.75 for it at Goodwill, and it sold for $41.50 on eBay in about a month. <laughs> These ultimate sweater machines, they're little machines to make sweaters. Pretty simple explanation. The ultimate sweater machine is the fastest and the easiest way to knit that we have ever developed. Before long, you'll be making fabulous projects such as these.
there's no end to the things you can make. Make warm and cozy afghans with colorful patterns and make them to fit the size you want in the colors you choose and make it at just the price of the yarn. But I paid $15 for this one. When I find them, I pick them up. They don't sell as fast as they used to, but they still bring some pretty good money. I paid $15 for it, I believe, at Salvation Army. It took about a month, but it sold for $110 on eBay. And honestly, I'm not even sure all the pieces are there. I, I spread everything out on the table, took pictures of it, put it in the listing that what you see is what you get, maybe incomplete, and it's still sold. So here's proof that if you find a good quality item, good brand name, and even if it's not in great condition, it'll sell. This is the Odyssey Broomstick Putter. Now broomstick for putters usually means it's got a really long shaft that you can kind of hold with two hands and you have a broom handle motion. Well, this one doesn't have a long shaft, so I actually cut it off. It's supposed to be like 50 something inches. They cut it down to like 37 and a quarter. Didn't do a good job. It's got a jagged edge. List all that in the description. Paid eight dollars for it at Goodwill, and it still sold for 150. It's actually going through the global shipping program to Australia. Buyers all in like 222. So yeah, proof that something of good quality, even if it's been modified, will still sell. So most resellers are going to tell you to stay away from old golf clubs. I'm going to tell you to look them up, especially if they're pings. This is a set of Ping Zing 2s, and they're pretty old. They're actually made in the USA. Good quality clubs that hold their value really well. And they're left-handed. That makes them even better. This is a set of 5 through wedge. Paid $40 for them at a garage sale. They were in a bag with some other clubs. I can sell the other clubs as well, make even more profit. But I paid $40 for these, and they sold for $220 in about three days on eBay. Can't beat a good set of Pinks. Some more golf clubs, some more ping golf clubs, and ping equals cha-ching. You should definitely be on the lookout for ping clubs, and use your imagination on these. This is a set of ping i3 plus irons. I'll put a picture up here. I forgot to tell you guys about them before I wrapped them up, but pay $90 at a garage sale for a bag of clubs, and I should actually be able to sell the bag itself for around $90 plus shipping, so that should cover the cost of these. Then there's some hybrids in there that I should get $30, $40 a piece for, a putter that should go for $60 easily. So these are pretty much covered but I paid $90 for everything and these just sold for $325 and they sold in about eight hours they're left-handed so they command a little bit higher price and they're in a little bit more demand so yeah ping equals cha-ching <laughs> 